Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thanks to those of you who are here in the room with us on campus and those of you who are joining us online. My name is Peter Gordon. I'm the course director for the Business of Film class in the Film Production MFA program here at Full Sail University. And I am excited to be hosting this session called Launching Your Freelance Career. So please, let's put your hands together and help me welcome our panelists. It's our <laughs> and now let me tell you who she is. You'll get even more excited. <laughs> This is our Hall of Famer, Marcella Arica. She's a recording and mixing engineer with a very long list of Grammy award-winning, nominated hit songs that you would all hear of, and I'm not going to tell you about it. We're going to let her tell you about some of the things she did as we go through the session, because this session is about you, and about you, know, you are going to launch your freelance career. I have just a few questions I'm going to ask Marcella to start off to answer at the beginning, and then we're going to open this up for as much as we can to questions from you in the audience and you folks online. Yes. So first, tell me, because many graduates in our business, all types of businesses, not just recording arts, have to work as freelancers. So could you tell us a little bit about how you started your freelancing and some other things that they could know about why it's important to create your freelance career as a business? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I definitely i am happy to be here with you guys. I wanted to create a, a different kind of session, this Hall of Fame, because I felt like in the past I was constantly being asked by students and uh, even graduates that were on, you know, on the brink of graduating, you know, what, what was going to happen? You know, what did they do? So I felt like it was important that this conversation kind of came about. But, um, you know, when you graduate, you know, whether you decide to go and work for a company or you go and decide to work for yourself, which is what's considered a freelancing, there's a lot of things that you need to, you know, think about and consider. Um, you know, when I first started out, I didn't start out as a freelance engineer. I started out as a intern at the Hit Factory in Miami. And I did that for, I think, about two and a half years before I actually started going out on my own. Um, there was a... As, as an audio engineer, I started off as an intern, eventually I became an assistant engineer. And once you become the engineer in sessions, well then at that point you start getting paid through no longer the recording studio, you get paid by the record companies or you know, whoever the, your client is. And when that starts happening, um, you, know, you need to create an entity for yourself. You should be able to create, because now you're creating a business. If you're not being paid by you know, a company like a, record, a recording studio or a film house or, you know, wherever you guys may end up, you want to be able to create yourself in uh, some kind of LLC or an S Corp. And depending on which ones that you decide would be something, a conversation that you would have with either, you know, an accountant, somebody, you know, it doesn't have to be anybody big, but just because they're going to ask you questions and they're going to be able to see what fits most to what kind of, you know, setup that you need, so. Yeah, when in my class in Business of Film, what I usually tell students about LLCs versus S-Corps and other things is I say, keep it as simple as possible Absolutely. for as long as possible. Yes. Because everybody wants to be their own boss, Yes. but do you want to be your own accountant and secretary and assistant? Yes, exactly, and if that's the case, I mean, I, I, from what I've learned, and I don't know if maybe, mm -hmm. I've learned that the, L, the LLC, is probably going to be the, the more easier route, mm -hmm. the less cost effective. It's a couple hundred dollars to kind of set up, has less of the red tape around it. Um, so what, is, what does that mean? That basically means an S Corp, there's a lot more rules that are involved in following some of the, you know, uh, IRS related, you know, um, you know, just anything that's related with taxes and whatnot. So I feel like the LLC in my experience has always been the easier one to set up. Yeah, you, you can set up an LLC in the state of Florida in about five minutes yes. by going to sunbiz.org for Absolutely. those of you who are here in the state of Florida. But I also don't recommend, my, my own recommendation is don't do it until you're ready. And also you may want to wait to find out where you're going to live if it's not in Florida and set one up in the city that, or the state rather, that yeah. you're living at. There's and, no yeah. federal incorporation. Exactly. And every state has their own, um, you know, website to, to set that up. Yeah, which is, so... 
you started out, you're now you're a recording engineer, so you're being paid by the client, so you needed to create, you said you needed to create a business yeah. of some sort, an actual business entity. Yes. Uh, so how did you let people know when you did that and, and that you were in business? In other words, how did you, did you, did you market yourself? How did you do that? Well, the way I marketed myself, I, it, it, <laughs> so it's been a few years now, you know, everything <laughs> has kind of been updated from when I first started. I kind of want to talk about when I first started. So when I first started, marketing was all through word of mouth. Everything was through how well, sessions went for me, and from there it was either my clients would talk to another client, or within the client pool that I was working with, I would kind of create, you know, have build my client list out that way. And also, when you start dealing with record companies and they start to learn your name, that's almost a sense of promoting yourself as well, because once you enter their system, then you're basically on the block. Like, they're like, okay, this is so-and-so, he or she does this, and now you're basically kind of going to be sought after, you know, because now you're kind of, not only do you have your clientele, but the people that are actually paying you also know about what you got going on, and they start to, to, to basically call you, so. And, and you, ha you haven't said this, because that's implied, and I know, uh, but I can say this. You also have to do a really good job, and... <laughs> Part of the reason yes. people recommended you was because your clients were satisfied, they were happy with what you did, yeah. and you showed up and you did the job well. That's also a key part of keeping your clients. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's definitely the key part. I mean, listen, guys, I can't tell you that I was amazing and I just perfected every, everything that I did along my way. I definitely fell down and, and, and made a lot of mistakes, but those mistakes are what kind of allowed me to learn and, and build myself up like, okay, you know what, next time I'm gonna handle it this way. So when you first get out there, you know, don't feel like, you know, the first mistake you, you, you make is gonna just, you know, set you back. It's not about that, you know. I think everybody has learning curves, people understand, nobody's expecting you to, you know, build the next Apple, you know, uh, company tomorrow, you know. So definitely just take your time to research, you know, what you're trying to build. What kind of company are you trying to build? What are your clientele? You know, like what, what is, you have to kind of visualize it, write it down, and say to yourself, this is, what I, this is the company that, I, that I'm going to be, that I'm going to represent. Yeah, which, which makes sense. I mean, looking back on my early career, I can't believe what people put up with uh, when I was just learning. There were so many mistakes I made. But people understand, especially if you're working hard yes. and you're giving them your all. And if you make a mistake, you say, gee, I'm sorry I made a mistake. That, yeah. That's important. And, yeah, I think ahead. definitely owning up to, to not trying to cover it up. Don't, you know, I mean, listen, I think there's ways that we can try to like, oh, let, let's try to cover up what I just messed up. But listen, if you messed up, I think people are going to be very more respectful to you admitting to what you, you know, what you've messed up on and just as long as you're growing from that mistake. Now, you've also worked as a freelancer with some very big names yes. in the business. How do you, do you approach them any differently than you would any other client? No, I mean, I, I, I'm very, I don't know, I, no, <laughs> not at all. I mean, you know, it, it could be, you know, Joe Schmo from Kissimmee that wants to record a record, and it can be Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation, calling me, and it's all kind of, you know, we, we, you know, you deal with things the same way. But I will say this, you know, how you value yourself is not dependent on, you know, what's going on, what your competitors are charging, you know, how you value yourself is the kind of work that you're putting out. So you know, if you're gonna be working with a client that, you know, you have to get as much information as possible when you first start out a job, you know, that way you understand what you're putting yourself into. You know, if somebody says to you, I want you to mix, or I want you to direct, or I want you, to, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you get every understanding of what the job is going to be because that way you understand, okay, this job is going to take me three days. This job is going to take me a week. And that's how you're able to kind of figure out what your value is going to be. You know, I think a lot of questions that I get is, well, how do, how do, I, how do I know how much I should charge? And, you know, like in the past, you know, or I've seen people kind of just ask around like what it is, what people charge, but that may not necessarily be what your value is. Your value may not be somebody that's been doing this for 10 years. 
you know, and, or, or five years, or even two years. So you have to really understand, okay, I know I can do this, you know, and you have to make yourself appealing. You don't want to charge something to where the person will say okay to that job for the first time, but then never call you again. The whole point of being a freelance, you know, person is to be able to get the work to keep coming in. Because you're not working for a company and you're working for yourself, the work has to keep coming in. Otherwise, it's a stop of money that happens. And that's a very, very uncomfortable feeling, you know. But there's a lot of perks to being freelance. You know, you, you, you have the, the ability to kind of make up your own schedule. You can, you know, just kind of be at your leisure of how you want to do it and, and the jobs that you want to take, you know, as opposed to someone saying, you coming into work every day and being like, I want you to work on this. And you're kind of looking at them like, oh, I don't really want to <laughs> do that, you know. But, you know, when you're your own boss, you kind of have choices. Yeah, that was, that was great. That kind of leads into the last question I want to ask you before I open up on the floor, because are there a couple of things that you think everybody need to know, two or three things that you could tell everybody that they should think about or know before they launch their freelance business or to help ensure their success? Well, yeah. I mean, one of them I kind of just said, I, you know, I would say know what your goals are. Um, really get an idea of what kind of business you want to start up. Um, you know, just because you graduate with one degree program, there's so many different entities that you can get into. And you can really market yourself in, in a, a few of them. Um, but, you know, you have to really understand so that the day you get the phone call, like, oh, so, you know, I hear that you do this, or I read on your website that you do that, that you can really get that job done. And two, you know, get yourself a nice, it doesn't have to be a full blown out website. like. You know, we live in the day, in the, in the age of everything is on our phones, on our on our laptops and iPads. Everything's in the digital domain. So, it's, get yourself a nice portfolio website. That it could just be a one page, just kind of saying, you know, this is who I am. Kind of list some credentials, things that you have accomplished. You know, awards, graduating dates, years. As you build your clientele, you could start adding to it. You know, but but definitely, you know, have something out there that you can that people can kind of say, oh, okay, this is where I can find you, you know? When people do search engines on, uh, you know, they, people do, I, I, the other day I was doing a search engine for somebody, uh, a freelance photographer in Miami, just because I needed somebody to do something really quick. And it's those kind of things that once, you know, you put it, you, you Google search some, somebody, you want to be able to have one of your websites to be, to come up, you know? So I think it's important to kind of make sure you know, once you start your business, that you have a way that people can connect with you in some way or form or other, or learn about you. And, you know, the third one is just, I would just say, like, like I said before, is really know your value. And there's other ways that I can also ex explain that to you guys, is knowing your value. Um, there's a bit of mathematics that go with that, um, but I can kind of break it down as simply as possible. Like, if you guys say to yourself, in a year I want to make $50,000. That's the number, right? I want to make 50,000, but I'm going to give you guys just an easy number. You can say to yourself, okay, well, for $50,000, what what's going to be my overhead, my, my expenses that are going to go into building this business? What are the expenses? That can be anything from office space, your laptop, your, the internet bill that you get per year. And everything is kind of calculated on a yearly basis. So you say, okay, I want to make $50,000 a year, but it's also going to cost me you know, with overhead somewhere around $15,000. So now your number is going to be about 65000 that you want, that you basically need to make more of. So from there, you kind of start doing some, I can talk to you guys about this a lot more because there's a lot of math involved, but there's a way, and I can actually, what I can actually do for you guys is this, is I can print something out for you guys. So if you guys want to give me your email and then you guys can have like a little structure, you know, so you guys can kind of follow and that way you guys will understand Kind of a, you know, a nice baseline on what your value could be in, in the market that you guys want to go into. See, that would be great. What, one other thing I want to come back to, I know I said I would open this for questions, but you just said something that made me want to ask. So if I came to you and said, I need you to do a job for me, yes. you, what would your answer be? Would it be, I need to think about, you know, I need more information, or would you hand me a sheet with prices? No, I would say, well, what's the, right. I would ask, you know, mm -hmm. well, what's the job? You know, what yeah. do you need? And, you know, mm -hmm. what is it all? I, I would ask a lot of questions because in the past, I've made this mistake. I've, I've mm -hmm. just kind of said, well, I didn't give them the sheet with prices. Right. I just said, yes, 
<laughs> you know? And then they would probably say like, oh, okay, you know, what do you charge? I would say, you know, whatever the price is. The next thing you know, I'm doing basically like, I should have charged three times the amount. Mm -hmm. But because I already agreed on this one amount, that's where you're at, you know? Could you renegotiate? Yes, but could it leave a bad taste in the client's mouth? Yes, you know, because it was your job to ask the questions. It wasn't, you know, they're, they're going to just say, hey, you want to take the job? Yeah. You know, and the less they probably, they probably want to say less because then they know the price is going to keep going up. But, you know, definitely just ask the questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's great information, by the way. I, I want to open it up a be, at, for questions. We have a questions from our audience. If you have a question for Marcella, if you raise your hand, a microphone will be brought to you. There's two of them out here. And for those of online, please direct your questions to the online moderator who will try to accommodate your questions. Someone will say we have an online question and ask it. Uh, because I really can't see you, particularly if you're in the back. If you just raise your hand, the microphone yeah, will come around. Nice. And when you have a mic, just come and ask a question. Hi there. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm already a freelancer, but uh, I have a small pool, pool, pool sorry, of clients, and I can't seem to get more. I tried going online to like different websites where they promote your business, but that doesn't seem to be working. Right. So what I would say to you is, um, try. I mean, do you do also like networking events? Like, do you attend events to where you can actually? At this point, you kind of need to get into a different pool of people, and the best way to do that is through networking events. I'm not sure what degree program are you in? I'm in game art, but I do oh, okay. a lot of graphic design work. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I wouldn't know what the networking events are, <laughs> but in just, you know, uh, uh, just like a basis, what I'm trying to say is like you, sh you need to kind of get out there to kind of have conversations with people, let them know this is what I got going on, and this is what I do, and, you know, if you know anybody, and it's just all going to be about conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what your, you know, social media, uh, it's, it's just a really big resume now, what it's become. Mm -hmm. You know, anything from, like, you know, especially, like, Instagram, things that you might create that you're able to share to the world and kind of, you know, make sure you use certain hashtags so that they're kind of being, you know, sought after and more people are being outreached to it. That's just my advice to you is just, you need to get around more people. And I think networking events are going to be key to that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. And, and there's one other thing to think about, too. If you have clients already, there's an old saying in business. It's called the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your business comes from 20% of your clients. Uh, people use you over and over again. It's a little easier if you want to get more business to try and figure out a way for your current clients to pay you more, to do more for them than it is to go out in the world and try and find the other million people who might be interested. So that's another thing to think about. Do that, the same kind of networking thing, get yeah. that way. Have you, have you found that to be true, that you get a lot of repeat business from oh, clients? Oh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's why, like, it's, uh, and, and, and if it's not repeat business from the same client, it's, you know, a referral from, from a client that I've been working with for a while, and it's like, oh, I've, so heard, I've heard so much about you. I love the work that you've done, et cetera, et cetera. Like, even today, there's an there's a artist that I worked with. Her album was, came out today at midnight. And just alone in the exploitation of people just knowing that I've been a part of this, like, it's been a, a crazy outreach of people wanting to have some kind of, you know, oh, I want you to mix for me, or I want, they want some part of, you know, they want something. So it's just been crazy, and I haven't been able to get back to anybody because I've been... <laughs> with you lovely people, so. But no, that's just an example, you know, it's just, it, it's an artist that isn't signed to me, has just, I did some work for her, and you know, now that people are finding out that I did a few of the mixes on her album, people are loving what they're hearing, and they're just like, I want you to do work for me, I want you to work on my album, et cetera, et cetera, so. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So, other questions, anybody else? I see a hand. Oh. Yeah, we see your hands, just go ahead if you, you got them with the mic there. Um. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, you already, and, um, I'm over here to your left. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> struggling. Hi. Uh, I'm Matt, Schne Matt Schnell, and I'm a creative writer. And you talked a little bit about this already about, you know, like when you're studying, you know, how much should I charge? Um, I think that's a big question on everybody's mind is that when you're starting out is that you don't want to overcharge people. So do you know of any places that we could go to online or um, any sort of networking event where we could get in touch with people uh, who are already in the business um, where we can compare rates to? See, and that's the thing. 
to answer your question blatantly, I, I don't have, I'm trying to think of, let me think about that, you know, any outlets that you can, I'm sorry, I just want to see who I'm talking to. <laughs> um, I don't know any outlets or websites like that, um, but you want to be careful. I know you, you want to have some kind of a baseline, um, and honestly, there's, you know, a community of people that you might talk to somebody that is living in a market where you know they, the, their market is is really high, but you, you where you where you live the market isn't as great, so you can't go into your market using numbers that they're doing. So you have to be really careful. Um, one thing I will suggest is maybe understanding, and this is getting a little bit more on, on, on like gov government statistics. But if you go on the La Bureau of Labor Statistics website, yes. they literally can break down what every job, every job, including sound engineers, graphic designers, film, production, everything, what is, being, what is the average right now. And I think if you look at those numbers, you can get an idea on, in the state that you're in on what the average is. And they really do break it down. So I would maybe start there. And then from there, once, this is, this is your community. This right here, like the, the, the students here, the graduates, the Hall of Famers that are coming back, these are the people that you can ask that are in the, the degree, program, degree program that you're studying, what it's like. You know, and I'm gonna tell you something because I, I had a conversation with one of the, uh, a friend of mine, he's a Hall of Famer here last week, because in the music business, I've been recently starting to get more involved in the Latin music scene. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, I'm a Latin girl, but <laughs> I've been in the general market for my entire career. So now that I'm entering this new, you know, this new world of music, it's completely different budgets. I cannot charge what I've been charging in the worlds of the Ushers and the Chris Browns and Madonnas. It's, it's, there's no existence. They'll look at me and shut the door on me. So I've been very nervous on how I should approach that. And I actually had to ask, you know, my friend Sebastian Chris, I said, listen, you know, what, what is, because he works in that market. That's his market. You know, and look, that's my community. He, I just asked him, what is the ongoing rate for mixing engineers? What's the ongoing rate for producers? Because, you know, the producer I work with, he's starting to do production. He can't charge what he charges Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. to, you know, a Latin artist. They don't have the budget. So... I say all that to say is maybe start at that website so you can have a basic understanding of what the average is in the state and then start to kind of speak out with, you know, uh, their students that are kind of working currently in, while they're going to school or graduates that come back and speak to you guys. Yeah, there's one thing I like to tell students in my class too is that you, basically if you're a freelancer, if you're in our business, the size of your paycheck is going to depend on the size of your audience. If you are writing a novel that's going to sell 10 million copies, you're going to make a lot more money than if you're writing a novel that sells 1,000 copies. And whatever it works for your industry, you said, you know, Chris Brown and Justin Timberlake are going to sell a lot of copies of their record, and they are going to be able to pay people. Exactly. So that's another thing is to look at who your audience is. Uh, do we have an online question yet? Yes, we do. Oh, good. Hey, Marcella, over here. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Cami. She's in music production. Um, she wants to know how intimidating and nerve-wracking was deciding to be a freelancer, and what made you know at the end of the day that everything was going to be okay and work out? That's a great question. Um, it was very nerve-wracking because I had, when I first started out, like I said to you guys, I was working for the Hit Factory as an assistant, as a general assistant and eventually assistant engineer. Now, those two positions were paid I, you know, were, were week, bi-weekly paychecks. The security of getting my paychecks were there. So when I started to kind of start, begin getting gigs that were not being paid by the studio and I had to actually go to the record company, to do that full time was very scary because you don't know when your next job is coming. So, you know, what's very important about not just working really hard at what you're doing you also have to kind of take 25% of your time to make sure that you're marketing yourself to get the next job, doing admin stuff to make sure you're getting your invoices paid. You know, there's uh, emailing, calling, there's just so much that's involved. And it, 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 it just, in my heart, I said to myself, you know what? 
I got into this business to being freelance. And I was maybe, you know, I was doing it for maybe about two and a half, three years working for the studio that if I didn't jump off the cliff, I would never have gotten off. And mm. I just decided to just go for it and believe in myself that I could, you know, be successful at making sure that I, go, I can get from one job to the next to the next. And you know what? It ended up working out because 16 years later, I'm still here. So <laughs> it's pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Uh, other questions here? In yeah, the hi. Room? Oh, okay, Francisco got one over there. Oh, oh okay. Here? Over that hi. One. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, lost. My name is Francisco Leatherman. I'm an international student. So what I want to know is that when you say that you're a f freelancer, it's your business, is that if the states look at you as a business and how hard it is to keep that, that, the business as well, because I don't know if it's, there's some things that you need to do every month or you need to keep some kind of ingress for you to stay as a freelancer. Um, uh, so wait, you're saying, is there any, are there legal things you have, you have to do yeah, as a non-US citizen to run a business? No. Or, or no, so to okay. start a business, if you start as a freelancer, does the state look at you as a business I don't know if you understand. You have to create your business okay. for the state to look at you as a business. And it's your name? It could be anything. Okay. When I first started out, my business was called Marcella Areca and Associates. Okay. It was super basic, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And then as time went on, I kind of started building out, you know, oh wait, you know, I want a cooler name, so I'm gonna do it this way, you know? So yeah, you can change it, you know. The reason why you start your, you know, you create a, a, a LLC or S Corp or a company for yourself is to kind of make sure that your personal assets are not included into your business assets. So, you know, once you start getting money, once you're, you, you start to make money for, in what you're doing, you need to make sure that's being funneled through your business, not your personal. It should not, a check should not have like uh, your, your first and last name on it. It should actually have your business. There's also, you know, tax, um, you know, situations that happen with, with businesses, um, exemptions, and, and there's a whole thing about it, trust me. It's, I could be here for like mm -hmm. two, three yeah. hours to talk about this, but yes, the state, once you register your company, the state looks at that as a company. They look at you as a business. Now, nobody comes up to me and says, you know, like my business is Red Bottoms Productions. Nobody comes up to me and is like, hi, Red Bottoms Productions. <laughs> nobody says that. I'm Marcella, <laughs> you're still a person. <laughs> you know, you just behind, you know, but what, lies behind that person as a business. And whatever that name is, is what you have. Yeah, the, the best advice I could give anybody who's really thinking about it, getting a big freelance business, make sure you know a good lawyer who yes. can handle this for you. Uh, but also remember that it's your business and you need to understand the legal ramifications of what you're doing. Because if your business makes a mistake and you forget to pay the government their taxes, the out. lawyer doesn't go to jail, you go to jail. You go to jail. So just important to do. Uh, wh another question here? Do we have one? Hello. Hi. Oh, good. Thanks for standing up. <laughs> My name is uh, Brett Bird. I'm in music production. Uh, I think you kind of answered that a little bit just now, but I started recently doing production music, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just wondering, like, so you're basically saying, like, right now would be the time to start my business entity? If you know exactly what that business entity is going to be, then, then yes. You should be very clear on what that business is going to entail. Um, not to say that you can't add to it later or kind of, you can, but just be really clear on what it is. You know, don't, you, you, you don't want to name it uh, whatever, Berg Music, Inc., and then later on you decide you want to do post-production mm -hmm. for movies or something. You know, just, you just kind of want to make sure that what you're doing is kind of in line with what your target is. Great. Yeah. Thank you. You're Great. welcome. I uh, also want to make sure we get at least one more online question if there is one. There isn't. Okay. Do we have another question in here? I got a question. Yes. Okay. We got one over there. Hi, my name is Haley from Entertainment Business. Good. I wanted to know, um, especially from a women's perspective, um, working in freelance, trying to build clientele and working with people who may be like toxic, if you know what I mean. What's your perspective or experience with that? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, any, you should never 
put your if, if you ever are working for someone or a company and the situation just isn't right don't put yourself second you know and 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 and, and regret staying in a situation you know i just find anything toxic negative you have to get yourself out of it the only person that's going to protect you is you you know and you just have to be very aware that as a woman you know there's things that you know first of all depending on what where you go as women there's still a shock factor in a lot of these positions that come with with the gigs so you know sometimes you, you might just get the demeaning you might get you know the the harassment and if it just becomes to a level that just is just not feels right to your soul if you just know like this isn't right then you have to you have to exit it you know don't put yourself in a position where you get sick of it you lash out and now you get fired you know or you get you know you lash out and people are kind of looking at you like you're the crazy one you don't want to mess your reputation up when you can do it in a very classy way um and and you know that's that's the best way i can say is just make sure you handle every situation with class yeah Great, thanks, that's a great answer. We have time for a couple more questions because this was only supposed to be a 40 minute session, but we have a couple more questions. I actually have a question. Who's, right where are you? here with the mic. Oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, over there. Sorry, I saw someone else wave their hand it's okay. there. It's so okay, I love that you're a woman doing it. So um, I know that you're probably in a room full of all, all males. By the way, my name is Benita. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, when you freelance, how much do you charge? Do you p charge per job or is it per hour? And is there a, how much money, is there some, would you have to invest a certain amount of money in yourself to become a freelancer? Uh, great questions. So there's answers for all of them. If, when I do, as a freelance, I, there's different ways that I do charge. There are, there's sometimes, like I, like I said before, the, what, the first thing you need to do is understand what the job is. You know, if you have a flat rate fee, let's say like I have a flat rate fee, but it's a bit much, sometimes it might make sense, it might be sexier for the client for them to see an hourly rate. Sometimes they prefer to be, you know, hourly because they'll say to you, I just want six hours. They'll, they know exactly, I just need six hours of your time. What do, what do you charge hourly? Or sometimes they'll say, you know, can I book you for three, five, one week, you know, whatever. Then that becomes more of a flat rate fee. You know, if they're gonna book you for your full day, then you have to figure out what your rate is gonna be per day. Um, and as far as investing in yourself, absolutely. Um, with anything that you, with any business, you have to put in so you can come, so you can put, you know, get out. So that can be anything from, like I say, that could be anything from making sure that you have a website, you, ha you own your own computer, you know, you have your own high-speed internet, really good internet. We're working in an entertainment business, guys. Like, we need good internet speed to kind of, you know, translate or trans, you know, send things out or send, get things in. So there's a lot of investment. Um, one thing you have to also remember about being a freelance, guys, is, you know, you're not working for a company. You're working for yourself. You're, you are your own boss. So things like healthcare is not going to be covered. You pay that out of pocket, and that can be really expensive. Um, you know, right now, healthcare at, at a minimum is about 600 a month. You know, four, five, 600 a month. You know, it, for my son and I, it's over a thousand. Over, it's a very expensive stuff. So it's like you have to consider that. You're just even the cost of living. Not that that is included in investment in your business, but you have to include. Once you understand what your expenses are and what your investment is going to be in your business, you also have to make sure you have to take care of yourself, which is having a roof over your head, healthcare you eat, you know, things like that. that. That's really terrific. We are going to have to wrap this up pretty, pretty quickly. Now, I know you have some things you'd oh, like yeah. to give I people. Forgot. Can we just maybe get some help uh, passing them out? Yeah, so guys, just before, I know once you guys start to embark out there, and, and this is actually a really special, I, I have this on my refrigerator and I decided to make these for you guys because, you know, it's basically something that I look, I look at every day, even though I've been in the business for over 16 years. It's just something that I like to look at. And for me, I saw this on the internet one day and I printed it out, I loved it, I put it on a magnet, it sits in my house, I look at it every day. But it basically says 10 things that require zero talent. 
And I know once you graduate from here, it gets, you know, you, you feel like, I got to know everything. I have to do this. I have to make sure everything is right. But this is 10 things that you can do that have zero talent. And I'm just going to read them off to you guys, and we'll pass them out to you guys as well. But it's really important that you guys understand this. And it's like common sense, but sometimes I think it falls by the wayside. But it's being on time, making an effort, having high energy, having a positive attitude, being passionate in what you do, using good body language. Very important, guys, because we, as like human, in human nature, we are, we, we, we feed by energy. We're fed by energy. So when somebody has really weird energy, we feel it. We may not know what's wrong, but we just know something isn't right. So you, if you're going to be working, because we work in such close quarters with others, it's really important that you have a really good positive energy um, and body language. Being coachable, which is major, you know, being able to, not when, when you graduate from Full Sail, I know you guys have spent a lot of time here, but there is always room to learn more and more, and you have to be receptive to even, like I say, as a 16-year veteran in this business, I'm still being coached. Like, I love to learn new things all the time. Uh, doing a little extra, whatever your job is, Go out, go out your way and do something a little more. You know, if, if, even as small as like if you're walking somewhere and a piece of paper is on the floor, don't just walk by it. Pick it up. Make sure where you work is how you treat your house, you know, and hopefully you treat your house nice, you know. <laughs> but be really, you know, just be really receptive to what's happening and going on. If you see somebody that you're working with is struggling, then do a little extra and, and, and kind of help them get up to speed. Just things that I just, you know, and uh, being prepared. No matter what, you, what your job is, make sure that you have your preparations. Make sure you know what is going to happen. You know, like even when I, when I uh, go down to sit and mix a song, I don't just sit down and mix. No, I sit down, I listen, I, I kind of figure out in my back of my mind, like, okay, let me go in this direction. I kind of figure out what the tools that I want to use, and I just I prepare myself, and then I, I go at it. And the last one is, is having a strong work ethic. So I hope you guys enjoy this because it's something, like I said, is near and dear. I hold it in my fridge. Something to look at if you're having a bad day and you feel like you messed up because you did something technically wrong at work. Don't worry. People are looking at other ways, uh, other talents, and it's something as simple as this. So, wow, yes, well, thank you. Thank you, Marcel, and, and thank you, everybody. Well, let's hear it for our shares. Thank you, guys. Really? Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you. Thank you. And we, we appreciate all of you attending, and thank you for thanking Marcel. And she gave everybody a present. I'm so excited about <laughs> I that. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the Hall of Fame. Yes. Oh, can I just say one last what? thing? Don't cut my mic off. I know the video probably cut off. Okay. Um, if you guys need to reach me, I know I, I was explaining you guys the, the value, and there's like a, like a little chart that I kind of have. If you guys are interested in that, my email is Miss Lago, M S. L-A-G-O 73 at gmail.com. Write me. I'll send it to you right away because I have it on my laptop, and I apologize for not bringing that. That's <laughs> great. Thank you again. Thank it's you. It's been great being here with you. Yes, thank you, Peter. Oh.